Right, hello again. Uh, welcome to uh, lesson six, uh, part six of six, final lesson of our look at energy at key stage three. So, uh, as you see, last lesson we were talking about non renewable and renewable energy sources. So, part six, final part, as I said, we're going to be looking today at saving energy. So, before we actually fully go on to the how to save energy, let's uh, go fully into exactly how the energy itself, or in this case we're going to focus on electricity, um, is actually created. Now, um, in lesson five, so we went through all the different types of uh, non-renewable, so uh, fossil fuels, um, and the different types of renewable uh, energy resources that we use to create electricity. So, um, we covered all of these, um, except for the tidal power down the bottom. So, we had the power stations for burning fossil fuels and for burning biomass fuels. Uh, we looked at wind turbines, we looked at hydroelectric power stations, and we looked at solar cells and solar panels as well. Uh, now, with tidal power, tidal power works very similarly to the way that um, hydroelectric power works, so in terms of a dam. Um, basically, with the tidal power, uh, a, a dam type structure is built, so when the tide comes in, uh, it's allowed to pass freely um, through over the barrier. Now, when the tide starts to go back out again, the barrier is closed, so there is um, a body of water held behind that. Now, as we discussed before uh, in previous lectures, or previous lessons even, um, that water itself then now has and carries gravitational potential energy. Um, now this potential energy is obviously the source of energy that we want to harness to create our electricity. So exactly the same way as it works with hydroelectric in dams, um, a, a turbine is then opened so the water is allowed to pass through this small pipe which spins a turbine, which spins a generator, which creates electricity. Um, so obviously that potential energy has then let go through the small pipe which then turned into kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is then transferred and used to our advantage to create electricity. So that idea is exactly what we're going to have a look at, but we're going to have a look at in the terms of our fossil fuels and biomass power stations. Now the principle is pretty much the same um, for dams as it is for tidal production as it is for these types of um, power stations. In terms of turning a turbine or promoting a turbine to spin, to then spin a generator to create electricity. Now in the case of fossil fuels and biomass, what we actually have here is our heating cell. So our fossil fuel and our biomass goes in here and is heated up and is burned. Now what that, that um, thermal energy is then used to heat up water. Now as water boils it turns to steam uh, and this steam basically rises up, goes and is channeled into our turbine. Now the movement of heat um, with our convection as we were talking about uh, in previous lectures um, this movement causes our turbine to spin. So the hotter, the hotter the water, the more steam is created, so therefore the faster the turbine will spin. Okay? So this is a point two. Now point three here, the faster the turbine, turbine spin is directly connected to a generator. Okay? So this generator spins, the faster that generator spins, the more electricity it creates. Okay? Now this is then connected to what is called a transformer. Now, it's not like the transforming robot or anything like that. And what it does is actually converts the electricity current that we have coming out of our generator, because it's at such a high voltage that if you had that straight into your house, everything would just explode. You wouldn't be able to use anything. So this has to actually make the voltage at the right level so that by the time it comes to your house, you can plug your Xbox in, you can, put, you can watch your Sky Plus, um, you, know, you can do all the little things that you want to do. Okay? So that's basically how a power station works. So what's the downside of burning fossil fuels? Um, what's the downside of these types of power stations? So as you can see, um, this is uh, a traditional power station. It could be fossil fuel, it could be biomass. I would say it's probably fossil fuel. Um, now the downside of fossil fuels is that when they're burnt, they do create a lot of pollution. Um, now this pollution is not necessarily just uh, gas, but it's also waste pollution from the byproducts of actually burning it. Um, now, with biomass, this is reduced. Um, it's not the pollutants that are caused are not as bad as they are from fossil fuels, um, but again, there is still pollution that comes from it. So, ultimately, as we discussed before, you know, fossil fuels 
are not ever anything. They're non-renewable. We cannot replace them, um, except for over millions and millions of years. Um, and with biomass as well, although we can replace it by planting new trees, you know, as long as it's managed properly, that is technically renewable, but also at the same time, it still does create pollutants, so it's not a perfect solution. But, you know, what can you do on a personal level to save energy, to make sure that, one, the fossil fuels that we are using are not going to run out, but also, two, generally just to reduce the, the demand of electricity that we need, so therefore we'll have to burn less. So we have a little look, just a few ideas. Uh, there's a great person here dressed up as a giant cat or a bear, not entirely sure what it is, but what this is actually symbolising is if you can walk somewhere, walk somewhere. You know, don't, don't make unnecessary journeys in your car. We've all got used to the luxuries of being in cars and it's all, it's all very nice to watch the world whiz by, but also, you know, if you can walk there, walk there. You'll be saving so much energy just on petrol alone. Um, light bulb you know at the end of the day if you're not in that room do you need the, does the light bulb need to be on are there little pixies in the room that are going to be really unhappy if the light aren't on honestly pixies like the dark pixies like to be asleep so if you're not in the room turn the light off and heat heating is it really hot in your house or you know do you could you could you wear a jumper you know jumpers are very very underrated i love i love jumpers jumpers are the way forward but again, all of these three ways are just little things that you can do on a personal level that if lots of people did them, we'd save lots and lots of energy and reduce the, the demand of fossil fuels and obviously the pollution that we create from them. Okay, so overview, what we know, fossil fuels and biomass fuels provide good and relatively cheap electricity but at a cost of pollution. Renewable energy is on the rise and we need to replace non-renewable sources with these renewable energies if we're going to be able to cut down on these pollution levels. And we can all help to do something on a personal level to make sure that we save energy. Okay? So, I hope the series of lessons, these six series of lessons, have uh, helped you to understand and have a look at uh, energy at Key Stage 3. Um, key Stage 4 lessons uh, will be available soon. Um, and again, um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.